everyone, Anita here and welcome to week 16 of the 52 week illustration challenge. Now this week we're doing something completely different and I know I say it a lot but it's really something completely different than I normally do. And as you can see this is my sketch and I will talk about the theme and my inspiration in a little bit. But for now I think it's very important to know what I'm actually doing. So I've separated the picture into four layers. Uh, you can barely see it because it's done in blue pencil, but there is a frame, then there are uh, leaves, clusters of leaves, and on the other page we have all the tiny little elements that basically compose the illustration and the background. And I'm going to be painting every single one of those elements separately. And yeah, I'm gonna talk about what I'm going to do with that later, because I'm pretty sure you will not know. From uh, seeing the thumbnail, I'm going. I'm, I'm going to be sure of that. So, <laughs> so this illustration is inspired by uh, Alice in Wonderland. The theme for this week was a mirror, and the first thing that came to my mind was uh, Alice's um, uh, Alice on the other side of the mirror. I believe that's how you call it. I'm never sure of that. Uh, but the movie is coming out soon, I really love the story, and I really wanted to do something, um, something about Alice. Um, unfortunately, the very first illustration that came to my mind, the first idea, was I felt too complex. Um, I didn't want to make a big illustration, and the idea I had did not fit on an A5 size paper, so... I just scrapped it, and um, now that I'm thinking about it, it would probably have been easier to paint an A4 rather than to play with all that I've done, but this is something different. So I'm painting on uh, the Stratmore mixed media paper, which is the same paper that I've used in some of my other illustrations, and yet again I'm complaining about the fact that it does not like watercolor much. But since other illustrations I've adapted and I know kind of like how to deal with that and also my style changed a little bit. Um, I'm actually not using that much colored pencils anymore. I don't use black uh, outlines and so the illustration itself is softer and I've kind of, I'm kind of adapting it also to the coloring. So I've only laid down a flat layer of um, orange for the uh, body. Um, I wanted to say hamster's body, but I didn't tell you yet why hamster. So recently during one of the streams, I've been asked like, um, why there is no more hamsters in my illustrations? Um, if you have been following me for a while, you will know that I paint a lot of hamsters. I have this whole hamster uh, fox story going on. And uh, I, recently I haven't been painting any, and then that's absolutely true. And so I promised to actually paint something with the hamster. So we have here a hamster Alice. A hamster is basically dressed up as Alice, and he is falling down the rabbit hole. Now, this is not entirely um, the, the second part of Alice. I keep forgetting how it's called. I'm, I'm just going to put it in the, in the description. But basically this is not this is the first part of Alice when she actually gets to Wonderland. This is Alice in Wonderland. But I really I kind of I really wanted to do this. I really wanted to uh, make like draw this scene where hamster is falling down the rabbit hole. And immediately when I pictured that idea, when I I thought about him falling down the rabbit hole, for some reason I pictured this idea of and yes, I will, I will say it right now, it's a shadow box. I wanted to make a, a, a layered illustration with a little bit of dimension between it. And now, at this point, I know where this idea came from, and so I'm going to tell you immediately. Uh, when I was actually starting this illustration, and even at this moment when I was painting it, I didn't realize where it came from. I was, um, I had a deja vu feeling again, and this happened before while I was painting uh, my submarine illustration. I knew I had this idea before, I have seen this idea before, I just couldn't place it, I really couldn't place it. And when I finished this illustration, I've just figured it out. Um, the illustration that I had in mind while painting this is, um, I believe her name is Liana Hay, um, 
and she's an artist that works with a lot of um with gouache <laughs> of course that's why i love her um but she creates a lot of those very cute illustrations that are very um disney inspired mermaids that kind of stuff and in one of her illustrations i'm going to um link it below she actually paints uh, Alice falling down uh, the rabbit hole and there are like lots of items around her and um, she is in like this kind of shadow box thing, I suppose. Now my illustration besides the, the, the idea doesn't have anything to do with it, luckily, because I was at first I panicked, I was like, oh no, oh no, did I copy someone's work? But no, I didn't, luckily I didn't. I just really like the idea of the shadow box. And I really love it. I'm going to use it in more illustrations because it's it's something that really fits my way of painting. So I'm still coloring um, the hamster. As you can see, it's really basic. Um, I knew at this point that I really wanted to have all the char uh, the character, uh, all the items in a very kind of like a soft uh, way of coloring. So all of all of the items and the character itself or himself I suppose it's actually a, a boy <laughs> yeah it's a boy um and they were both supposed they all of them were supposed to have the same kind of shading I wanted just a very very soft and I'm using a very uh, light shade of blue and a, the lightest shade of gray I had which was almost empty by the way so <laughs> Uh, and I'm using this to just kind of like shade it just gently, just in a few places. I wasn't really, I like I've told you before, I'm kind of experimenting with very minimalistic way of shading. And I didn't want to uh, add too much color. I didn't want to add too much shading. The dress is white with blue stripes and the she the, the there is a white apron, the <laughs> the standard white apron. And then there's the orange for the skin, and then that's it, or the fur, actually. And I'm doing the exact same thing with all the items. As you can see, I'm not even putting any color in. I'm just using the marker, the Copic marker, which is, like I've said, almost dry. And I'm just, that's why I'm actually doing so much sketching, because I was trying to push out as much of that ink as possible. And so I'm just doing minimal, very minimal shading. Uh, and then I'm putting in all the lines. I've, I did it. I didn't do it on the on camera because it was just too much fiddling. I wanted them to be really nice and even and perfect. And so um, the camera always puts a little bit of pressure. Um, um, and also the angle is really awkward. <laughs> so um, whenever I feel like it's not entirely necessary for you to see it, because these are just lines. There's no trick to it. I was just using. Um, a paintbrush and some uh, some watercolor and I was just lining everything and just doing it the line art and now I'm adding just a little bit of detail so I've added the same red color to the cup uh, also to one of the cards which is the ace of hearts and there is the same color in the in the cup and in the teapot just to add a little bit of extra interest because of all, all the items were rather plain and looking the same and I really liked it because I knew that I wanted to have a little bit of more colored background and I knew that the, f uh, the foreground layers will be very busy. So um, that's why I started with the character and with the items because I wanted to base on them what, what I would be doing with the background. And I wasn't really sure. I knew what I wanted to do with the foreground, but I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with the background. And so um, I kind of thought that it would look really nice to have some kind of gradient because it is a hole, it's, it's a hamster dropping down the hole. So I thought it would be like kind of nice to have it, you know, grade down, <laughs> to have a gradient. Now, the one thing that was really bothering me is that at the lower left corner, yes, of this piece of um, paper that I'm using, if you really look closely, you will see that there are some stains. I have no idea where they came from. They're definitely um, finger stains. Like, they're actually fingerprints, but I have no idea because I am sure they almost look like also like a cat print. I really don't know where it came from. 
it's just really weird. That is why one of the reasons why I hate buying paper um, in sheets uh, without me choosing that paper because I'm not sure what I'm going to get. And you can get all kinds of weird stains from the oils that come from hand. So yeah. So I'm working on this um, gradient. I really, really didn't know what to do with it. Um, I figured that it was too flat. I didn't like that it was so flat. I wanted to add a little bit more of like a gradation around the edges. And so I decided to use some soft pastel, um, just around the, the, the round circle. And there will be a frame on top. So I knew that the majority of it will be covered anyway. And so I figured that, you know, it would like have a nice uh, kind of touch to it. However, a soft pastel works really different on this paper. And I just, uh, I, I wasn't feeling it. And then I realized that this thing is becoming way too dark. There will be a dark background. There will be a dark foreground and I, I've just decided to completely scrap it. And I've just painted a really, really um, generic background. Uh, this is just ultramarine, uh, which I knew that it would have a little bit of a, um, of this grain that I really dislike. <laughs> but in this case, I actually really, it was really positive thing. And so I've added one layer, just completely flat layer of the ultramarine. And then I came on top of that with a little bit of um, so like drier brush in vertical strokes to kind of um, enhance the movement, the motion. And then I started working on the foreground. Now this is a rather a boring piece to watch. That's why it's really fast, even though it still looks like I'm painting really slow. It took a while. This is a diamond pattern. Mm, now the way I envisioned it, it was actually black and white with some gold stripe but uh, i realized that this wouldn't really look good because the flower the, the leaves in the foreground i'm sorry the leaves they are supposed to be black they're actually done in black gouache you don't see me paint them on uh, or cut them out on um, camera because it was just a struggle i did it for a few hours and it was just way too much but so uh, even uh, in any way, <laughs> I realized that, you know, the, f um, the frame itself couldn't be that dark. But the white, the really light um, tone of the of one of those, um, of the gray, I really didn't like it. So I put in two layers of the gray just to enhance it a bit. And that unfortunately looked rather dark to me at first. Bear with me. At this point, when I'm putting in the first uh, layer of and the, um, the, the, the signal brush. Oh my God, pen. And it's a, it's a, just a copper gel pen. Um, at this point, I thought it was way too dark because the copper had exact same tone than the, as the, uh, as the gray. And I didn't like it. It just looked really weird to me. Now, another reason why it looked weird is because that, um, that copper pen, the copper gel pen, um, I don't know how to describe it. It's not the most attractive color ever. Now I've tried it on a lot of papers and it does look really nicely on just a regular printer paper. Just a thin printer paper it actually does look how it's supposed to. However, on any other paper, and I'm talking watercolor, I'm talking um, this mixed media paper, what happens is that the it becomes weird. It's like the silver, um, glitter goes to the top and the rest of the pigment settles down and looks really icky, just bad. And so I came back over those lines with some uh, gouache. Um, and that helped it a lot. There's nothing more to say to that. And then I started drawing in the uh, black frame where at the, it missed, the middle of it was supposed to be cut off. So this is basically the frame and it was supposed to be the mirror that the theme was talking about. Um, and when I put that in, I realized that I really disliked how light those, um, those, the gray diamonds looked like. And so I took my middle gray Copic and I just covered everything in that Copic. Um, I'm not going to say that I, Actually, at that point, I thought it was way too dark. Bear with me. It happens a lot when I don't know what I really want. 
I wasn't really envisioning anything else like about this is the first time I'm doing this kind of project, so it it just happens. And I'm really happy that I was able to salvage it. And I was really happy in the end. Um, you don't see me doing it in the video either because I've just added it as, as an afterthought and I felt that it wasn't... I, I was at that point afraid that I would just mess it up and so I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna waste the memory card. But I actually left it. There's a, a very gentle pattern going on in those um, grey diamonds. And now I'm cutting out all the pieces. So the coloring process was actually not that bad. It didn't take as long as I expected it to. On the other hand, the cutting took forever. Uh, now I'm cutting here only the characters. I've cut majority of the, the leaves especially, where were just a nightmare to cut. Um, I've cut it out, uh, out like off camera because uh, uh, no, it was just painful. It was just really painful. And the reason for that is that um, I'm cutting it out with regular scissors, as you can see. Um, and I was counting on... Because I know I have a pair of those really tiny craft scissors. Like, <laughs> I call them Russian scissors because of um, another YouTuber I watch. She's a nail artist and she calls them uh, Russian scissors because of how they're supposed to be very magical. And <laughs> since all Russians are... According to her, very good at um, nail art, so she calls them magical Russian scissors, and it kind of stuck. And so I call them Russian scissors as well, and they're gone. I don't know where they are. So, and I'm not really good with exacto knife, especially on this very thick paper. And I used it uh, purpose on purpose um, because I wanted the piece to be thick, to be stable. Um, but I'm really much better with scissors, even those big ones, I was much better with scissors than with the X-Acto knife, and so I've just cut the smallest pieces possible, and as little as possible with the X-Acto knife. And I was really bummed that I didn't have the little scissors, I really don't know where they where they are, I they, was, they were always laying next to my desk, in one of those little cupboard, uh, drawers, drawers that I have next to my, um, on my desk. Um, but, but they're not there. And I really think that the whole process would go much, much faster if I had those tiny little scissors. But, you know, what's done is done. It came out really nicely. And uh, But I really wanted you to see how long it took me to cut out that little piece. And this is only the hamster we're talking about. Um, so the real trick to it, and something I've learned during my scrapbooking days, uh, when you make a little cutout like that, it's a good idea to use a pen uh, in the same color that your line is. So for example, if that was a black, if I was still using a black line art, I would just uh, line everything, I would use black ink on the edges of the paper so that they're no more, not more, not white anymore, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, it's really late right now and my tongue is a little bit twisted. <laughs> Um, so this is a really nice trick because it makes the whole piece look really nice and aesthetically pleasing, very professional, very finished. It really adds a lot of this really nice depth to the piece because like, as you can see these uh, leaves, um, they had a white edge to them as well and I covered everything in black and now they look really nice and finished. So here is the first peek of what I want to do. I'm kind of assembling it slowly. Um, and another thing that occurred to me, you know, if you're cutting a tape, um, like I do, cut your nails. Long nails are not helpful at all. Maybe with just the peeling the backing of the, of the tape, but they're really not helpful when you're working with tiny little pieces of tape. Or a tiny little pieces of anything, actually. I was so happy that my thumb was still broken because I broke the nail on my thumb. Oh, actually, no, I, I never mind. That's not on topic. <laughs> but um, I was really happy that the nail was really short because it was so much easier to actually hold it. And I'm just adding uh, the tape to um, the places where I feel that it just pretty much to all of the leaves because I really wanted to to it to stick good and be stable. And this is dimensional tape, so it has a little bit of, um, I think it's a one millimeter tape. 
So the leaves will be a little bit higher than the frame. So that's kind of my first layer. I call it the first layer. And uh, while the frame is my second layer. Um, so you, as you can see, it takes a really, really long time to actually attach that. But once this was attached, I really felt like, wow, it's, it's, it's finally paying off. I was really happy. Uh, I'm lately extremely happy with how I, uh, with my work. So uh, it was good. And there, as you could see, if you could see that, I was having a little bit of tape uh, around the edges that was hanging off. Now, the way I handle this is just I, I put my finger on top of it a few times and that takes away the tack and you can just leave it there, uh, especially under glass. It just does, it doesn't really do anything. Uh, and then I've started to assemble the background. Uh, so the first thing I knew for sure that I wanted to attach immediately was the hamster. And so I'm just basically adding a lot of tape uh, and I'm doubling it up. So I'm adding double strips of tape on top so that it is a little bit higher than all the other items that would just will have one piece of tape. And so I'm taking the backing off and just um, arranging it, it's like putting it. I knew exactly where I wanted it to be, so it was really easy. Now, the, I, the items themselves, um, I was first assembling them. Uh, so I was putting them in the places where I wanted them, like, and then I started using tweezers, much easier than using my extremely long nails. Uh, so I first arranged the items and then off camera, I attached them. So as you can see, I wanted some of the items to overlap. Now the way you do it is that one of the items would have one piece of tape, the other item would have two pieces of tape and it would hang above the one piece of tape. It's a really nice trick as well. It gives a little bit of depth. I use it only in one spot. Um, and now I'm actually adding a vertical white lines to the background once again to enhance that um, that movement of the items, the falling effect. I really wanted to add that on top, um, but I really didn't know how. Now, if I had more time, like I was thinking about adding um, a clear piece of plastic on top of everything with the with the, the details, but it was just way too much work for the effect, this was just as good, so I was happy. <laughs> and now I'm assembling everything. Um, I've cleaned the glass. It's a little frame that I've, uh, I've had laying around. Um, and everything is of course made to match the, the frame. So the frame is actually a little bit smaller than an A5. And here's the little piece of wood that's separating the layers. And it's actually, uh, I've painted the inside of it with copper paint as well to match. Now because of that extra tape as well, a little bit tricky to put it together, but in the end it looks extremely well. I was so pleased with how it looked like. I'm definitely going to do more of these pieces because it's a really interesting way of presenting an illustration, don't you think? <laughs> if you'd like to see this illustration in more detail, please head to my Facebook page or the 52 Weeks Illustration, um, 52 Week Illustration Challenge group page. <laughs> and please leave me a like if you've enjoyed this video, it helps a lot. Um, thank you so very, very much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye!